What if I told you that all of these drawings are made up of a single line? It's true, and in this video I'm gonna show you how I did it with the help of a tiny bit of math. Not to worry, I prepared a lot of cool animations to keep it as visual and simple as I can. And in the end of the video I'm gonna attempt to draw this on my custom plotter to check how well this technique actually performs in real life. In case you haven't seen it yet, make sure to check out my custom plotter video after this one. Explanation time. So the plotter is pretty cool and all, but it can only draw SVG files and that's a big ass limitation. And why can it only draw SVG files? Well that type of file actually just contains the description of the image itself, specifically this path information. So the plotter can use that to follow along the paths and actually draw. Also these paths are usually just the outline of the shape, so if you actually want to fill up those shapes you need to generate all of the path in between. That's fun and all but that's not the focus for today. So big question, is it actually hopeless to transform these pixel images into SVG? Yeah, it, it, it kinda is. Well, kinda. This problem led me down a rabbit hole of what is known as halftone art. This type of art first got popular in the 1800s and was used to print images onto newspapers. At the time the technique was having a dot pattern of different sizes and from a distance that would trick the eye into seeing different shades. Now this is a similar technique to what I used in the ASCII art video. That was actually one of my favorite projects as well so make sure to check it out after this one. Since then people learned how to make halftone art in many different ways. We have some line based ones where the lines grow thicker and thinner depending on the shade. Also using thin lines everywhere and just concentrating them more where there's more shade. Some people have played around with circular patterns. I mean they even draw them by hand. That's, that's pretty sick actually. But the one I liked the most was this one made out of squiggly lines. The drawing looks great from afar. It also looks great if you zoom in. So let's get wiggly. Yeah I'm, I'm probably gonna cut that out. Lucky for me there's already this math function that does all the wiggling for me. Namely the sine function. I'll keep this really short but we really need to go through the basics. It's probably better from, from this side. So the sine function. The basic sine function fluctuates between 1 and minus 1. It finishes one full cycle at 2 pi and then it just repeats forever. Now what we need to do is learn how to massage and mangle this wave into the shape that we actually want. Let's go through some of the ways you can achieve this. So the first thing you can do is add something to the sine function. This will shift it up and down. This is called the offset. Now what if we want to stretch and squish the function? Well for that you can just multiply everything. Uh, negative numbers become more negative, positive numbers become more positive. Ish. Essentially, this is the effect. And this is called the amplitude. We just learned how to manipulate it vertically, but what can we do on a horizontal level? The same way there's a vertical offset, there's also a horizontal offset, which is called the phase shift. This will just move the sine function back and forth. Now, by far, my favorite way of affecting this graph is by playing with the frequency. Frequency is what you multiply the x by, and this gives it kind of the accordion effect. But there's also a less intuitive way to think about frequency, but it's gonna be pretty useful. So you can think of frequency as the speed you're actually walking through the sine function. Well, imagine we have two graphs. Top one, basic sine function. But we're gonna walk through it at twice the speed we're walking at the bottom graph. And at every step we record the position of the sine function. As you can see the result is the same as changing the frequency. The bottom graph wiggled just as much as the first graph in half the distance. So if this seems random but it's gonna be super useful in the next bit. So the plan is to create multiple lines that go over the rows of the image changing the wiggliness according to the shade of the pixel that they're going through. Now first we have to decide on a picture. I'm gonna keep it PG and go with my boy Mark Rober. Mark Rober. We start off by loading in the image, we scale it down to the number of lines we actually want to draw and then we turn it grayscale. Turning it grayscale basically reduces the pixel to a single number that represents its shade. Ta-da! And this is the result. Next step is figuring out the starting positions of these lines. To do this I first define a pixel width and then I place the starting position at the center of each row. From there I can just draw a straight line that covers the width of the image. And this is a resulting masterpiece. Now next step for me is I would just like to draw a sine wave for each of these lines. This is actually pretty easy, we just need to walk through the sine wave, store each of its points and then connect it with lines. Gotta make sure the steps are small enough so that we actually get a smooth line. Not gonna focus too much on the code but you see this bit right here, does it look familiar? And you can see the sine waves right here. This is going quite well, but I still don't see Mark Rope. What else can we do? Well, let's play with the amplitude. We get the target amplitude of the pixel that we're currently walking through. With some math, you just define a max amplitude and make it according to that. And when the function reaches the next pixel, you slowly change the target amplitude according to the new shape. Then we just multiply this amplitude by the sine function exactly how I explained it to you earlier. Let's open it up and... Oh, 
bad. Now we change the amplitude, so the final step is my favorite, changing the frequency. And since the approach with amplitude worked out so nicely, let's just do the exact same for the frequency. Okay, uh, what the f Did I break anything? Like the code looks fine. Okay, not gonna lie, this part, had me doubting myself for a bit there. This is where the idea that frequency is just the speed at which we walk through the sine function comes in pretty handy. So in the code, it's as if we have two graphs, so we need to actually keep track of both separately. The step of the sine function is according to its own frequency, while the step in the drawing is actually constant. This makes it so that we don't abruptly change the sine function and actually are still walking smoothly over it. Now please enjoy the final result. I mean, this is pretty fucking cool. I think it's pretty crazy that we can get this level of detail just out of wiggly lines. Probably more a cool feat of our brain than the actual algorithm. So I did some more coding that I'm not gonna go through, but essentially what it did, it connects the lines at the end, turning the multiple lines into one single line, which the plotter is hopefully gonna be really happy about. So I totally screwed up the audio here. As you can see, I got my Red Bull out, which means I'm super excited. And we're finally gonna start drawing something. Yeah, still no sound here, but Marky Boy looking good. Couldn't just leave him alone there, so I gave him some company. This is as far as I got before the plotter started giving me problems. Probably Elon turned out the best. Can you even identify who this guy is? And this is Reckless Ben randomly. Go, go subscribe to him. He He's doing good work. Okay guys, time to hit the sub thingy. The next video, I'm gonna finish this whole plotter project off. I think it's gonna be pretty cool. What's gonna be even cooler are the next projects I'm gonna work on. I already know exactly what I'm gonna be working on. I'd really appreciate if after this one, you go watch some of my other videos. I've built an offensive Twitter bot. I did some animal cruelty with laser turrets. I even built a sushi piece dunker. For the 1% of you still watching, let me know if this video format was cool and you wanna see more of it, or you just wanna see like final result type thing. Keep stacking that knowledge. Sounds kind of whack. Anyway, I'll see you in the next one.